I wanted to have some push-up handles to do some workout at home. I could buy some for a little money, but most of them are cheaply made with foam handles and I didn't want to have this kind because they begin to smell over time. Good ones out of steel are pricey and have very thin handles. But there are also wooden ones which are pricey too, but why should I buy wooden ones? I can make them myself. A quick look on one of my wood racks and I found some suitable pieces. The wood is not very good because it already has some defects like screw holes, split nuts or some splits along the whole board, but for this project this is alright. I face jointed to get a flat surface and make it easy to work with the wood. And also edge jointing. The other faces are then made parallel with the thickness planer, which in my case is the same machine. And here a quick look behind the scenes to give you an idea what's happening in between all the scenes. The other edge is made parallel on the table saw. Next I drew the shapes for the side pieces. I didn't have any specific plan or drawing, I just had the idea in my head and drew onto the wood until I was satisfied with the shape. Once I had the shape I drew it three times again while being careful not to include the defects of the woods so they would end up on the offcuts. As this is a project related to workout, I thought I should cut out these shapes by hand so I also have a workout while I'm building it. This is one of the moments when you realize how powerful a bandsaw and all your other power tools really are. Just imagine doing a cut this fast with a handsaw. To smooth out the bandsaw cut and finish the shape I used my disc sander. Now with these pieces made I next need to make the bars that go in between them. I could just use some thick dowel stock but as I have a lathe I am gonna turn them myself and I have some scraps of ash wood and they are perfect for this job. Before turning I made the pieces square on the bandsaw. And to speed up the turning process I thought it's a good idea to cut off the corners so I tilted the bandsaw table to do this. The stock then got mounted in the lathe chuck. I first turned it into a rough cylinder and because the diameter is pretty small I let the lathe run first at about 2200 rpm. Then I marked the size of the tenon with a caliper and also marked the length with a pencil. With a parting tool and a chisel I then sized the tenon until it fit the test hole. The other end was basically the same, but I couldn't make a test fit there, so I just measured carefully. After that I smoothed the bar with a skew chisel and brought it to the final diameter of about 45mm, which seems to be a good size for my hand. This wood was a little tough to turn because it was so dry, it dried for about 30 years and I got it from my grandpa, so even with a sharp skewer chisel and the right cutting technique I had to be careful to get a smooth surface. Then some sanding with a power sander, a homemade drill attachment, and by hand. This is now sanded to 600 and polished with wood chips. And now I just have to make the same thing again. Next I further shaped the side pieces with a round of a bit on the router table.
I thought quite a bit about putting on finish or not, but I finally decided to put on two coats of oil-based polyurethane. The main reason is because of cleaning. If you are using them you will sweat and if there is no finish on the wood then the sweat will soak into the wood and it can also start to smell over time. It gets a little bit slippery with this lacquer but it wouldn't be any worse than with something out of steel. This lacquer needs at least 24 hours to cure so in the meantime I planed around with my chip separator. After sucking up shavings and waiting for the first coat to dry for a full day I sand it over with 600 grit paper and put on the second coat. The same goes for the side pieces. I gave the finish two days to cure. Next I need to drill the holes that receive the tenons from these bars and they should have all the exact same distance from the bottom. And in order to drill them I set up a fence on the drill press and this should provide the same distance each time when I drill. The def stop prevents me from drilling all the way through. Now removing the tape that protected the tenons from the finish and cutting off the ends of the tenons and bringing them to the right length. After a test fit I put it all together with some glue. I try to spread the glue evenly in the hole by rotating the bar while pressing it in. I clamped it to my workbench to make sure that the whole thing is hold flat while the glue set, so I don't run into issues with the piece rocking once the glue is dry. So they are finished and ready to use. You may wonder how strong are these? Let's find out. I think my workbench will break first. You can already see that there's developing a gap because the workbench starts to bow. So this is strong enough. And what can you do with these? Well, let me show you. You can be quite creative with these. And they are of course suited for any kind of push-ups. And with the magic of video editing I can do as many push-ups as I like. They also have a good use after the workout.